I'm Jay Evans. I'm a research entomologist with the USDA ARSB Research Laboratory in Beltsville, Maryland. And our laboratory is focused on honeybees. Honeybees are essential to many parts of agriculture. They pollinate everything from almonds to fruit trees. Most of the really interesting foods that we eat uh, are pollinated by honeybees and other pollinators. So our focus is on managing beehives. We are interested in disease management, uh, stress management, and nutrition. So honeybees actually have a number of different diseases. They're, they have bacteria, fungi, viruses, and a couple mite parasites that are important for their health. There are two species of bacteria that affect honeybees, and they've been known for many, many years um, for causing what's called fowl brood disease. In the case of fowl brood disease, they start to grow and they get about halfway through and then, they're, then they just fall apart. Um, it's a bacterium that grows very aggressively in the bee larva. That one is controlled very strictly in the U.S. Uh, because it's so dangerous. So when it is found, the beekeeper has very few options, one of which is to just destroy the colony. Um, and then the other is, with some control, to use antibiotics. Often they still destroy the colony that has symptoms, but they will treat the neighboring colonies to make sure it doesn't spread because it's so contagious. Throughout the year, honeybees are vulnerable to a parasitic mite called Varroa. This mite has been in the U.S. for about 40 years. It is highly dangerous for the bees themselves that it bites because it actually um, it aggressively takes nutrients and, and actually tissues from the bees that it's biting into. Um, but it's most important because it, it moves viruses from one bee to the next. Nosema is also a very important disease. Um, Dr. Judy Chen in this laboratory has been an expert on that disease for many years, and she's found some treatments, some new medicines that hopefully will reduce that disease. It's, it's another one where it's really waiting for a cure. We don't have a reliable medicine uh, for that disease either. So we have about maybe two and a half million beehives in the U.S. Uh, the ultimate goal is to, to keep those numbers steady, but to reduce the cost to beekeepers of maintaining their honeybee colonies. Right now they're spending a lot of effort uh, building colonies up, trying to replace colonies because of disease and other stresses. Our particular focus right now is on developing medicines that help control viruses in honeybee colonies. We've decided to focus on natural products. Uh, and these can be everything from uh, chemicals naturally found in nectar to other uh, microbial products that are already in the environment and then also hopefully in the foods that we eat already. It's also important to find things that are safe for the honeybees themselves. And so we're looking at some natural products that are in the, the flowers that they actually collect food from. Uh, unfortunately, that still leaves a world of hundreds of potential medicines. So, so we've had to develop new techniques for screening these to make sure they're known to be safe for human consumption is the first screen. And then we look at the availability, if they're expensive or not so expensive. And we've gotten down to a little bit over a hundred potential medicines for bees. We're especially interested in the worker bees because they are the ones that pollinate, they collect all the food, they keep the colony going, they feed their sisters to build up the colony. So most of our tests involve uh, screening how these medicines affect worker honeybees. Right now what we have running today is an assay where we're putting 20 worker bees in each of dozens of different cups and we feed them these compounds in a sugar water solution. So it's sort of like they were going into the hive, getting honey and drinking it and feeding themselves and their nest mates. So I'm just checking the mortality of these bees. We'll go through every cup and we'll see how many are dead on the floor, how many look sick, and then based on how many are dead, how many are getting a little sicker, we'll make assessments on what we're feeding them. So we're testing different chemicals to see 
how um, they affect the bee and if they help the virus killing it and everything. See, they're all healthy, they're all running around. So we're testing the effects of some compounds from plants on honeybee viruses. We've uh, screened around a hundred of these compounds and now we've got these compounds that were the most promising in reducing the infection of the pupae. That's like the chrysalis stage of the bee. And yeah, now we're seeing whether the same compounds will reduce the infection of the adult bees. Mm -hmm.